What be going on, people of the world? <laughs> Love you, Carrie. Good day and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Rhino, Mr. Saxon, we have a beer from Full Beard Brewing Company um, up in the North Bay area. Um, yeah, they're Cochran, I think. I think they're Cochran. Cochran's right? Alberta. No, there's a Cochran up here. Yeah. Really? Hmm. I'm just uh, keep chill. Yeah, that doesn't happen here. Um, on the banks of the Matagami Brown Ale, six percent alcohol by volume. Bang! Uh, I'm just quickly trying to say, for sure, Full Beard Brewing Company. On the banks of the Richard. Oh, I don't care about that. I want to care. No preservatives or additives. Unfiltered. Keep. They don't actually say where they're located. Oh wait, 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 wait. Return for refund where applicable. That doesn't help me. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. Timmins. 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 So Cochrane's near Timmins. I, I, I believe you. Oh no, I, I'm a friend of mine, Leo, lives in Cochrane, and she's like, "This is that brewery's from my place." Oh, okay. They're from a ways away. Yeah. So uh, this was also a uh, brew box. A brew box. A recent brew box. Yes. Getting this brew box fresh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Joe and everybody else at Brew Box. It's not that I don't think you. Well, it's it's Brew Box for us. Is that what you wanted? That's perfect. Brew Box Fresh is much like a specialty calendar fresh. Yeah. Well, you figure, right? The brewery has to brew it. They have to sit on it. They have to send it to the place. Yeah. And then they have to package it. They have to send it out. So it's it's not a quick turnaround, and now that the brew box is also doing their bottle shop, they have beer that they're they have on hand. Yeah. Which means <coughs> I don't know if there is a uh, dates no on. Yeah, I haven't seen any dates on that. I thought maybe, but I don't. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah. Sorry, it's a brown ale. Who cares about the sign? It looks the part. Yeah, it's it's mahogany. It's yeah. beautiful. You can tell it's hazy though. So uh, yeah. it's got a little bit of haze to it. It's got a nice, uh, slightly off white, slightly mocha head. Yeah, a little bit of a mocha head. Tiny snap, crackle, pop. I love the sound of that. It's uh, it's got a rich smell to it, like a lot of residual sugars, lots of caramel malt. Getting no bitterness on this whatsoever. The smell out of the can. It smells like a. It smells like almost like an Irish red. It's like molasses and caramel. Yeah. Oh, I had a hair in there. That's gross. My hair. It wasn't from the beer. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't from one. <laughs> uh, so the last beer I had by them, I haven't up to, like, uploaded it yet, and I don't know what order this will go in. But I've had their Five O'clock Shadow, and uh, it had some buttery notes, which okay. I don't know if it was the age of the beer. I don't know if they screwed up a batch. I don't know if it was supposed to be there, but uh, I knew it was there. I don't smell it on this one, where you could smell it on the other. So let's let's see. The only other thing I'll add to the aroma, it sort of has like a yeasty homebrew aroma to it. Um, yeah. But, which isn't a bad thing, because I homebrew, so. It's a little thin. Um, the, uh, the, the flavors are pretty muted on this. I, I was expecting something a little bit more rich and robust. Um, it drinks a little thin for a 6% brown ale, I find. It's got like a slight butterscotch type of aftertaste, but it doesn't feel like a full, well-rounded flavor of butterscotch. It's, it feels like, it's like a muted flavor, like a almost hollow flavor, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Mm. Okay, you're right, a little thin. Yeah. Not bad, but a little thin. I see what you're saying flavor-wise. Uh, I think this could be an easily approachable beer for anyone that isn't a big brown ale fan. Sure. I'm getting the. I'm, I don't know if it's if it's me looking for something or if I'm if I'm just insane, but I'm getting the slightest touch of green apple on there. Okay. Um, I don't personally pick that up, but. That being said, again, I mean, I know I know these off. These off flavors are considered brewing pots, but there are breweries that do it on purpose. Yeah. Uh, like the buttery flavor was a certain brewery out of uh, out of the Cambridge area's the 
telltale sign for a long time. Yeah. And I mean, the, the, the butterscotch, butter flavor, that type of stuff, I actually don't hate it in all beer styles. It yeah. actually works in some. And I see your muted butterscotch in here. Um, like you, I thought that it was going to be rich and robust because of the smell. That, though, doesn't matter. I mean, it's a, it's a drinkable beer. Yeah. It's drinkable. It has a little bit of an almost charry back end. Yeah, it, it does bitter out a little bit on the back. I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of, uh, I don't know. I, I think when I drink brown ales, I just sort of have a certain flavor. Well, it's, it's just like me. It's like me with, well, I'm the same with browns and reds, right? Like, I, I expect an Irish red yeah. is when I drink a red ale. Then when you get the hopped out American reds, it just, it leaves me wanting. Yeah. Because I am, I'm a malt maniac. Um, lots of malt was used in this. You can smell it, but it doesn't taste the part. Yeah. The, the malt flavors that come through are very much just one. But like I said, that isn't, that isn't bad per se. I mean, it, it's a weird thing, right? Because uh, beer drink, uh, the craft beer drinkers are getting weird and weird and weird, right? Like, we are. We are. Like, really you, we just keep wanting more and more robust flavors. Well, you can't keep going. At some point, you That's have true. to go back to this type of stuff. That's true. And this is, this is more entry level, and I'm not saying anything bad to you guys at Full Beard, but more like an entry level type of brown ale, where if you didn't know what a brown ale was, yeah. Here you go. This is what to expect at the very least. Yeah. Um, very drinkable. I could share this with most people. I could bring this to a barbecue. This would work with a lot of food. I could actually even even like braise chicken and stuff in this. Oh yeah, yeah. You can it would be it would be a great things. cooking beer. Yep. Um, actually, I do a nice Irish stew, and this would probably add to it nicely. Fit the bill. Uh, out of ten, um, again, anything between a five and a ten is something I like and I say thumbs up. Really, even if I gave it under a five, I'm still telling you to go and try it yourself because everybody's tastes are different. Anyway. But seven seven and up is my, I would buy it again. I'd probably give this a straight on seven. Yeah, that's exactly where I was sitting. I was, I was thinking of seven. Um, yeah, like the, the body itself isn't, isn't uh, an off-putting body or anything like that. It's no, just, there's nothing, there's nothing just, off-putting. It just really. doesn't drink like a 6% would. Like and from and like I said, I, I was I was thinking in my head that I'm getting a slight touch of green apple. I still am with each sip, but yeah. I mean that just might be all the flavors playing on each <laughs> other. And it's not a flavor that's. And I know again that a lot of people find that as to be a, a off flavor, and I know exactly what it means and all that. But in this, it actually worked. Yeah. In my mind, at least, yeah. it, I just bring it up because I actually taste that. But that's perfectly fine because it works. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. I think I just sort of had a pre preconceived notion just because I saw a brown ale 6%. So, you know. How does he end his videos? Do you remember? Um, <gasps> Peace out! See you again for another <laughs> daily drink vlog! Peace out! <laughs> oh no, I didn't stop.